Hello, pattern readers. Are you ready for some more news and speculation for season one of the Wheel of Time TV show? Of course you are. This is going to be a fun one because I get to talk about a theory I've had for a while and expand on it a little bit with the latest teaser from the show's official social media. I'm going to say this video is going to have spoilers for the Eye of the World throughout, and I'll occasionally make reference to something small from a later book. I'll call that out when I get to it in case you need to skip, but I will have a link to the original teaser in the description. So now let's get to watching it and breaking it all down. All right, let's make a deal. So it looks like we have finally gotten a little clip from an actual episode, or at least a longer trailer. And I would bet, in fact, that this short clip does come from a longer trailer that they probably already have put together. Because I don't think you would see these exact same cuts as you do here in the final scene. But we are getting edited footage, which is awesome. So now let's go to the provided video descriptions that we got and break that down, because as usual, that's helpful. And then we'll go to some specific frames from the video. The video starts with ominous sounds over a black screen. Then a script page that's mostly blurred appears. The visible line reads, and inside he sees something protected from the ravages of time, a ruby encrusted dagger. The script dissolves to show a dark hallway inside a massive stone structure. A dim light shines through a window, showing rubble lying on the floor. We then see a man's hands opening a gold box. From the box, he removes the dagger as a voice says, All right, let's make a deal. The video then ends with a shot of something mysterious that quickly fades to black. So pulling out some of the relevant frames, there is more that can be made out on this script, though it isn't terribly illuminating. Prior to the line in the description can be made out, he moves toward it, blowing dust away. The iron is rusted and decayed and cracks away as he opens the case. And then after it says it must be worth more than anything he's seen before. He picks it up, looks at it, and then... Now is where I start to get super frustrated with the terrible quality of compressed video on Twitter. This is the best I can pull from that shot of what they describe as a hallway with light shining through a window and rubble on the floor. Can't make out much of anything, but I will say the window resembles some other windows in a known filming location in block one of production. The St. Wenceslas Church in Visluni. I've covered this before and speculated that it would be used for Shadar Logoth scenes in episode two, and it looks like that idea was correct. These don't seem to be the exact same window in the shot, but clearly in a very similar style. We then see the case that contains the dagger as Matt is about to open it. What I want to talk about here is that the dagger is not in a big pile of treasure, as is described in the book. There are some implications to this, so let's break it down. First, just from a production standpoint, why go to the effort of creating excessive amounts of treasure for a single scene? But that's a minor point. More importantly, this makes Matt's choice of the dagger deliberate, not haphazard. In the book, Matt and Rand and Perrin have already agreed to help Mordeth. Really, mostly Matt, let's be honest. Perrin and Rand are along for the ride. And then when Rand notices and points out that Mordeth doesn't have a shadow, everyone freaks out and grabs their weapons as Mordeth starts swelling like a balloon. Only instead of Matt grabbing his bow, he grabs this dagger from a nearby pile. So instead, here, he's very deliberately making the choice to open this case and see what's inside. There are a couple of things to point out in this shot where Matt is slowly picking the dagger up. First, to carry over from the previous point, I think it's pretty safe to say that this action of Matt's would not go unnoticed if Rand and Perrin are there as he's doing this. The dagger, again, it's not in a big pile of treasure. There doesn't seem to be any other action going on that would distract from what Matt is doing. But let's talk a little bit about the dagger itself and point out a few details. Most people will notice that while the ruby is still in the hilt, it isn't in the pommel as we are used to seeing it depicted. 
Jason Denzel of Dragon Mount pointed out that this may be more visually noticeable and play to the camera better. For instance, in these photos of an officially licensed dagger from museum replicas, the ruby is really only noticeable from certain angles. I also thought it might be useful to be able to quickly cover the ruby with one hand, such as in a scene when Matt is being protective of it, and it's actually less awkward to do that with the ruby in this position. I will again lament the quality of this video, which I don't think can possibly fully display the details of the design or even show the ruby itself to best advantage. But it does appear that the dagger is in a sheath, which is different from the book, but likely quite useful for using it in scenes and especially once we establish how dangerous even a tiny nick from this blade is. This little clip ends with Matt having lifted the dagger out of the case and we hear a voice saying, all right, let's make a deal. The voice is almost certainly Matt. It sounds like Barney Harris, and it would make sense given what we know. That said, I do think the actual line has been lifted from another shot in the scene. It's likely we would be looking at a shot of Matt when he says this rather than the dagger. There has been a lot of discussion already about what this line means, but to me, the simplest explanation comes right from the books. There is a deal made between Matt and Mordith. They agree to help him carry treasure out of the city, and in return, they can take a share of the treasure. It's very likely that we're going to see a similar type of bargain made here. That is a deal, only in this case with maybe less treasure being depicted, maybe the details of the deal would be a little bit different, and maybe the dagger would be specifically mentioned in the deal. The second and more important thing is that I think it's possible that Rand and Perrin might not be there when Matt makes this deal, because it might be very difficult to then disguise the fact that Matt has the dagger. Now, it's possible that they start off exploring with him and then head back before he does, or they become separated for a time. Otherwise, I think Matt would have to say that he's left the dagger behind and then secretly have kept it. I don't think it will work well for the audience and Rand to know all along that Matt has the dagger. It works better as a surprise. Matt starts acting oddly. We don't really understand why. And then eventually it's revealed he still has the dagger. There are actually a couple tiny little bits of foreshadowing for Matt just in this little scene. So I'm going to very briefly mention some things that happen in The Great Hunt and The Shadow Rising. So if you need to skip ahead a little bit or mute, just go to this timestamp on the screen. So the chest itself is reminiscent of the Horn of Valir and the chest that it's kept in. And then the idea of making a deal is very reminiscent of Matt's bargain with the Eelfin. Okay, now we can't overlook the fact that if Matt is making a deal with Mordith, then probably there's a Mordith. Someone has been cast as Mordith, and we don't have an official casting yet, but I have to tell you who was the very first person who sprang to my mind, and if you don't know already, it's Steve, of course. Come on, this is a pretty good guess. We still don't know who Steve is. And as our friends at the Takaran Riyadh podcast pointed out, wait a minute, good King Wenceslas, the name of the church, by the way, looked out on the feast of Stephen. Steve as Mordeth confirmed. I don't know what you think about that theory, but I'm kind of into it. I think this is the best idea yet for who Steve is. Okay, it's time to talk about that last shot of the teaser and how I think it might fit in with a theory of mine. So the video description provided actually says that we see a glimpse of something mysterious before it fades to black. So this is not just loony Wheel of Time fans seeing the Dragon Reborn in their cup of calf. So for starters, this image is terrible. They mean for it to be unclear in the first place, but I'm a big believer in impressions in a situation like this. And the clear impression that I got was a dragon. And more specifically, as I look at it more, a dragon's head, likely in the style of Chinese dragons, which is a style consistent with the design from the books. Maybe you don't see that, and I can't say that I blame you, but that is what jumped out to me. I did play with the image a bit to try to enhance it, but there's not much that can be done. And I drew some lines to enhance the parts that looked dragon-like to me to hopefully give you a slightly better idea of what I am seeing. There are, of course, 
tons of other theories out there for what this might be. I don't plan to go through all of them, but I just wanted to say that overall, none of the other ideas I came across really like struck me and any of the arguments for why it might be a way gate or a great serpent ring or a stone carving of Mashadar, like nothing really rang for me. And that impression of a dragon was just stronger. So one idea that I do think is worth discussing is that since this might be a clip from a longer trailer, that last shot might be an image of something unconnected or the start of a title sequence or something along those lines. And I think that is plausible, but since they chose to leave it in here and chose to draw our attention to it, I'm gonna run with the idea that it does have some connection to the scene they showed us and to Matt for now. So if it is a stone carving of a dragon head, which is my best guess, what does that have to do with Matt? To me, it ties in with a theory that I've had all along, which is that the show is going to make a mystery in season one out of who is the dragon reborn. And that means casting suspicion on multiple characters, including Matt. In the eye of the world, I don't really consider it to be a mystery at all, considering that we know that Baal Zaman is looking for one among the three Taviran in particular, and we spend almost the entire book in Rand's head. But the show is not going to just be focused on Rand at the beginning, and so they have an opportunity to make a mystery out of it and to make it a more exciting reveal. First of all, I think they're gonna try to have us thinking that it is Loghain, a powerful channeler who many people believe is the real deal. I do expect that he is going to be gentle, so that should come as a bit of a shock and then have us looking a lot harder at those other possible candidates for the real Dragon Reborn. And all along, they'll have been casting suspicion on several others, which would at least include Rand, Perrin, and Matt. Rand is easy since he is actually the one, and in fact, they might have to tone it down a little bit so it's not too obvious. Perrin has his connection to the wolves, and as I've talked about before, I think if they cut Elias from season one and give us less upfront explanation for what a wolf brother is, they can work with that to make him look like more of a candidate. They might need to add some other points in Perrin's favor, but I'm gonna save that for another discussion. So let's talk about Matt and how they may be able to cast suspicion on him in the show. If they do have Matt seeing or interacting with somehow a stone carving of a dragon in Shadar Logoth, that by itself would really only be a small clue, an Easter egg, a red herring, really, that would pique our interest. They would need a lot more than that to really make a case for him. But I suspect that's what this shot is doing here, hinting at the idea that Matt is going to be a suspect in the Who is the Dragon Reborn mystery. Pulling from the books, they can use Matt's ability to speak and understand the old tongue without realizing it. That is something odd that doesn't really have an explanation. However, Maureen does provide a possible explanation, which is the connection Matt has to the old blood of Manetherin. And that does actually point away from him being the Dragon Reborn because we also know that Maureen is looking for someone who was born outside of the two rivers and his, the old blood of Manetherin being so strong in Matt points to him being born there. So we don't know for sure if they're gonna use that same point of evidence, but it's a good bet because it's a very important piece of Rand's history and of the prophecies, him being born on Dragon Mount. Either way though, I don't think the old tongue itself is enough to cast suspicion on Matt. They're gonna need a little more. For this next point, I am gonna reference something that doesn't come in until the dragon reborn. So if you need to mute or skip ahead a little bit to this timestamp, go ahead. So I think one easy thing they could do is introduce Matt's luck early. All it would take really is one scene, Matt is playing dice in a tavern and he's on a winning streak and someone points out that he has the Dark One's own luck, which makes Matt and or Rand very uncomfortable. Maybe another reference here or there to his luck and that would do a lot. Another thing they could use is the dagger itself and the effect that it's having on Matt. We know that it makes Matt more paranoid and distrustful and gives him dark moods. 
And at first in the book, we don't know why that's happening. And as I said before, I think they should continue that in the show. So we start to see this sort of dark side coming out in Matt. And at first we don't understand why. So if they're doing that and at the same time, they're playing up that darker side of the Dragon Reborn's reputation. He is a figure of fear. And a lot of people associate him with the Dark One or think that he's maybe in league with the Dark One instead of opposing him. So if they really play up that side of the Dragon Reborn and they're starting to show more of a dark side to Matt, there's a possible connection there, at least until we understand exactly what is happening with Matt. And at the same time, emphasizing the darkness in who the dragon is supposed to be would also serve to bolster the response we can expect to get from Rand when he finds out that he can channel and is told that he is the dragon reborn. It would go towards explaining why he would be afraid, why he would want to deny, why he would want to run away. Because it's not like he's being told he's a hero. It's kind of like he's finding out he's a villain. So what do you think about this theory? Do you think they will play up that mystery of who is the Dragon Reborn? And how are they going to make Matt look like a candidate? Maybe you think that shot at the end is not a dragon and is something else entirely. So let me know about that. And what do you think of the dagger itself? By the way, some people think that when they revealed the sword, that was something old. And the guitar, they said, was something new, which could make the dagger something borrowed. And it might mean that next we're getting something blue. Maureen, anyone? Personally, I am hoping that we do get to see a shot of Maureen in costume with a glimpse of her cassiera and the Great Serpent Ring. So what would you like to see? Make sure to let me know in the comments. Make sure to hit like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.